I'm bound. Here we go. All right, now it's time for the show to begin. Time to watch a show. Any second now. Show's gonna be out. A dark stage, and then a beam of light. The music starts. The lights come up. The praises of imagination are sung. And then... Mickey Mouse appears, and the crowd goes absolutely wild! Guys, it's Mickey! At a Disney park, I can't believe it! Another PhotoPass cast Mickey member uh, yep. joined. <laughs> are you still on that sex dream kick? You just refuse to see the truth, you escapist lemming. Also, Sex Dream Kick is my Katy Perry cover band. California girls were indestructible, Daisy. <laughs> One of my favorite bits. Anyway, <laughs> on the stage like nobody's watching and shoots fire out of his fingertips. God, surely he is the father of all lies. Mickey continues to part the Red Seas for a while. Which side is he on, man? Then he dreams of himself being projected onto the water he raised. Yes, here's that water screen technique, the reason this show exists. Later perfected for World of Color. I have to say, this water screen thing is really clever, and it's really neat to see yeah, I don't know why I was such a, on way. such a World of Color oh, kick. Cancel. First you complained about no, I know exactly why, because I love the show to death, but, you know. <laughs> Calm down, Mickey McNitpick. It's one of those things... Really comparing... uh, there's a reference I would have made. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, I think it was honestly because one of the few one of the few things that uh, was discussed in our private message thread about uh, about this one of your early what in, in the first wave of messages one of your few contributions was I like Fantasmic but I like the world of color better so I just ran with that and made it a personality trait in the first draft of the script. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think the the whole like I can't remember if that was in the script or not. Like the whole uh, later perfected for World of Color, it, it, unless I, I can't remember if that was an ad lib or if it was uh, in the script. What was that World of Colors? World of Colors. I think that one was. <laughs> yeah i i I think that I think that one was in the script. Um, but you delivered it similarly to how you delivered a lot of your ad libs, so it's hard to tell for certain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I I know that it took a while for me, especially to get the any of the dialogue to you, and, and like after you had thrown the rough cut together, I just felt so bad that I hadn't done it yet. I like you didn't. Okay, don't feel like you guilted me into doing it. <laughs> I felt like super guilty and I just like did it the next day <laughs> um, after I saw the rough cut because I, I was I, like, yeah. damn it. <laughs> I, I, I actually forgot about that. I forgot the rough cut. Uh, I didn't have your VO yet and I was just kind of doing it. <laughs> I, I forgot about that part of the process. Yeah. I just remember that part too. Um, but honestly, that kind of helped me a lot with how to deliver the lines too. And that's, that's probably why this is one of my more, like, even though it's not my video, like it's one of the more better, it's, it's one of the more memorable projects that I've been a part of. And I will owe it all to you, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, um, I very specifically, and I, I talked about this in the commentary we recorded uh, years ago, but I was very specifically trying to make sure that this video would feel at home in all three of our respective filmographies, as it were. Definitely. Like, I, I, I was trying hard to make sure, like, if you were watching this, aside from the fact that it starts with me and you two bring in, and you, you two are brought in, aside from that element of it, if you were watching this in a playlist that was a bunch of your videos, it would still feel at home. If it was a bunch of Tony's videos, it yes. would still feel at home. And if, if it was a bunch of mine, who, what, whoever your entry point was into this video, you would get what you wanted from that particular uh, 
contributor. And, uh, Which I, I feel it's kind of... Uh, lots of... Lots, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, we, we all put up, poured our hearts into this, essentially. Like, even though I didn't really contribute much outside of performing. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, sometimes that's all I have to give. I'm sorry, my insight doesn't work. <laughs> um, or I just save my insight for my own projects and be a little greedy little bastard about it. Um, but yeah, like I, I find it kind of funny that you have this epic three-part saga with all three of us in it. Tony has the riff, which has all three of us in it. I've yet to do anything with all three of us. And now, like, I don't know the likelihood of that because Tony's basically a podcaster at this point. Well, we'll see. But, uh, yeah. Who, who knows what the future holds? Um, but, uh, um,. I mean, you've done videos that the two of us show up in, but not a big, not not a big major crossover for the three of us on your channel. No, 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 no. It and was that's actually, yeah. Hmm. yeah. It was actually a brief window where I, I um, sorry, the the lag is making this difficult, but I, I'm not sure which one of our ends it's on. It is probably mine. I don't know how to fix it, but what you gonna do? Um, the yeah. uh, there was a brief. There was a brief window where I pitched to you guys, since this is going to be in three parts, if we want, we could each put one part on each of our blip pages. Um, but uh, you guys said, nah, you did, you did the work. You should be the one who gets all the ad revenue from this, which I appreciate. Of. Again, as we discussed before, there was barely any ad revenue because it was fucking blip. But... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it it was something we considered. Um, yeah. <sighs> Mickey is at us. Little Mermaid advertises itself as a live performance of the story and then uses clips from the movie as an excuse to not tell the story live. This is recontextualizing the clips to tell a new story, thin as it may be. And yes, by the end of the show, they may overdo it with the recycled animation here, too. But the water screens are at least far more interesting than an ordinary movie screen on a stage. Plus, they're complementing the live footage with fireworks and water splashes synced to the scene, making it way more engaging. Wait, I'm about to blow the lid off this whole Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with Mickey Mouse, even though a minute ago you two were excited to see each other? How do you account for Mickey's rapid change of personality? <laughs> I haven't had a day off since 1928. I'm on so many drugs, I don't know. I forgot he was in this. Day. Uh, go away, Grumpy Mickey. We need. When in series, I have Mickey bitter that the company barely does anything with him, <laughs> but also bitter that he has never had a day off. So, um, which one is true? <laughs> I. Mm. I mean, again, when you're basically a logo, yeah, like, not having a day off is valid. But, yeah, I completely forgot freaking Conspiracy Guy was in this. And I remember, like, really the trying to recapture the... Yeah, I know. <laughs> you may see him again one day. <laughs> You may see him again one day, I promise. Um, but, like, I, I remember, like, really trying to recapture the voice, but I know it was before I started working at Universal's, because this, this was when, my, when, my, uh, when I was at my previous job. So it must have been, like, me coming off of a cold or something? Because, you know, those were the days where if you had a cold, you'd just go into the office and nobody would care. Uh, <laughs> now you get a call by HR being like, why'd you call out these couple of days? We want to follow up on that. 
Not that I am uh, uh, spilling autobiographical information that happened today. But Woody Woodpecker still has beef with David Lynch? What? <laughs> huh? That, that's why anyway. <laughs> uh, Woody is underused at Universal, I guess. Sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, like well, I did like, the best oh, I could to try to match the voice. Universal that, that's... Studios tra- yeah. I'm, 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 I am going to uh, extract myself and then reinsert myself in hopes that I will pick <laughs> one lag. I'm doing my best. I am doing my absolute best to anticipate. <laughs> you should talk about the show that stars Happy Mickey. After more footage from one of the only parts of Fantasia anyone remembers, we get a song over images of flowers. There's also dancers dressed as a giant flower on stage. See? Flower imagery? Sex dream. Then suddenly we get neon jungle animals? Okay, so it's an awesome sex dream! Here's where we get the first major difference between the coasts. Here in California, we get a generic jungle score. Are as we the left laggy now? Float by, including King we'll Louis. see. So a giant car we'll on stage who forgot to turn off his high beams. Then that segues into the original Disney Bizarre Dream sequence. Pink elephants on parade on a pretty kick-ass electric guitar arrangement. Nothing says staying late at a park that doesn't serve alcohol like a drunken hallucination. Back in Back the in <laughs> music with the weird neon monkey is another cardboard cutout neon animals on stage. What exactly was Mickey smoking when he had this dream? And hey, Rafiki shows up to do what he does best. Contribute nothing. My work here is done. And we have the full pink elephant sequence, but they make an appearance in the midst of plenty of other recycled animation. Yes, bubbles float by containing scenes from, oh, every Disney animated movie, but with special attention paid to The Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, and The Little Mermaid. You know, the three movies that already have their own shows at Disney World, two of which are in this very park. One of which is right next door. <laughs> you have a lot of sequences like this because when they built your precious amphitheater, they figured they had to make the show longer to justify it. Because after all, everything has to be bigger in Florida. So what the hell's your excuse? Well, back in the original park, after Pink Elephants, we have Pinocchio and two can can marionettes on stage. As the music alternates between I Got No and Little Wooden Head. And the strings alternate between being yep. on Pinocchio and on the girls. And the strings are on Pinocchio while Got No Strings is playing because... Irony. Then there's the angel fish doing a weirdly tender dance, probably trying to seduce Jiminy because that's what fish do. And this is where both dreams catch up to each other as Mickey dreams about drowning a cricket. And then we're back to recycled animation as Monstro attacks. He splashes and the audience gets splashed. Then Mickey starts drowning and the audience doesn't. <laughs> so much for full immersion. But it's nice that Mickey decided to finally show up in his own dream again. Help! See, this is why amateur waterbending should only be done under strict supervision. Then we get Mickey's eyes, an animation that may or may not be recycled, but was certainly cheap and easy. Hey, what's going on? Uh-oh. <laughs> A fucking pirate ship! That's see what's going on! A fucking pirate ship. Suddenly, Europe invades. What the hell? Okay. I, I have a thing to show the show the show the, show the everybody right now. Oh, yeah. So Cassie just came home from her mom's, and she brought back a present. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, Look at that all in. There we go. Yeah. Look! Look at that. It's I want. It's more than likely a reprint. Yeah, but, but it's, it's still very pretty. I mean, my brother was a Disney kid. He was born in the eighties. Yeah, this looks like eighty. 
six. Yeah. MCM L X X X V I. Yeah. Anybody who knows Roman numerals, <laughs> I think that's 1986, but yeah. VI is definitely six. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. And LX is minus one or minus 10. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to show that off. Very, you know, very it's cool. kind of appropriate to what we're what we're watching right now. We're we're on Fantasmic. <laughs> so <And laughs> there you go. Fan Fantasia Mick. It is 1986. Okay. Native Americans go around the river in canoes and huh? Oh, but this probably makes more sense in Disneyland because you're watching the show in Frontierland. So even though they're from the East Coast and not the Old West, the Indian canoe thing is at least aesthetically appropriate, right? You'd think that, wouldn't you? But no, Disneyland doesn't have the Pocahontas sequence. Oh, we have the pirate ship in the storm and then the blast of gunfire. But instead of Europe and their criminally non-existent final countdown, that was an ad lib. Ship Columbia that was by Captain Hook and his crew on their piratey quest to stop their annoying neighbor kid. Blast this hook! This hook that in no way hindered me just now. Blast it! Peter Pan swings around on ropes because I guess this is after he promised not to fly, but he never promised not to flip. Or maybe in Mickey's dream world, flying works by holding on the zip lines. But whatever. <laughs> Peter battles Captain Hook and the pirates around the lake until the crocodile arrives to chase them off stage and out of the way for the next segment. And that's why I like that segment a lot more than the Pirates of the Caribbean segment. But also based on a full fledged Disney classic with a legitimate villain. What the hell, Florida? They could easily switch that part back, though. Like, uh, they can remove the pirates part without. Affecting any of the other updates. Yeah, exactly. I'll give you one guess. Eisner. Fucking Eisner. Yes, true to his inability to see the parks as anything other than giant shopping malls full of free advertising, Eisner demanded that the East Coast Fantasmic focus on more recent films than its West Coast predecessor. It wasn't Eisner that saw the parks as shopping malls. We made plans to keep this sequence updated. Yeah, we didn't good we had it, I guess. Sell out, sell all the way out. But it's still Pocahontas. Sure, there was a long stretch without an animated hit for you guys, but even if you didn't update it for every new movie, at least every five or ten years you could change it up. I mean, for all my complaints about the sparification of the original ride, this would be the perfect place to work in something based on the Pirates films. Well, look who called it. Imagine Elsa controlling these phantasmic waves. You want it recent, Eisner? Tell them to keep it recent. Pocahontas isn't recent enough to not be dated, but it certainly hasn't held up as a classic, even ironically. Just relax, Dave. I mean, why would you want an exciting fight on a pirate ship when you can have people digging for gold in a state where there isn't that much? See, it's a visual metaphor for the whole Eisner administration. Yeah, after the thrills of choreographed gold mining, the mystical spirits show up on the water screen for a second. We get natives dancing, then more gold digging, then animated natives dancing, then something explodes because I think someone accidentally shot something, and the sides kind of start fighting. But it's really hard to see what's going on from a distance, and there's no clear focus of the scene. So I'm just going to look at Ratcliffe running around like a moron. <laughs> <laughs> this was a good edit. <laughs> Look, it's John Smith! Look, he's heroically swinging from one side of the cliff to the other for some reason. And now he's climbing up a little higher. Surely standing up here instead of over there will save the day. Oh, there's another guy up there. I literally never noticed that watching the show in person. And then Pocahontas <laughs> finally shows up at the top of the majestic mountain, and she stands there for a second, listening to the voice of old Lady Obi Willow. <laughs> then we see animated footage of her standing there. Come on, two Pocahontas and not a single cliff dive or make out session. Why do we even come to the new world? Then we just sort of give up on the Pocahontas sequence and go back to the Oscar bait ballad as Florida sees a montage of recycled animation of dancing couples then floating floats with actual dancing couples. Once again two of whom have their own live shows in the same Florida park but to be fair this part was in California. 
What are you doing here, Ad? What happened? <laughs> We're about to get a long stretch of copyrighted music, I think. Yep. I mean, if we talk over it, it's fine. We can claim it as yes. a remix. Do you just not know how to use it? Is that why you rely on a seagull for your made-up balderdash? Your prince is right there, right next to you. Or are you singing to his face about a hypothetical different dream guy? This date's not going well. Why don't you go to hell? You ain't my love, true. It's not me, it's you. Another bit of brilliant writing there. Oh, thank you. I enjoy forcing parody songs anywhere I can. With you once upon a dream. That was a good edit. Imagination is so vast it manages to miss the obvious. But then the villains start to arrive, beginning with Snow White's evil stepmother in her codependent relationship with a piece of glass. And yes, this was made during the point in Disney history when the mirror was voiced by Tony J. And yeah. how do I feel about Tony J's voice? <laughs> I love it. Fame is thy beauty, Majesty. Yes. But hold, three lovelier maids I've seen. Wait, three maids? I mean, sure, in Disneyland we've only seen three princesses, but in Disney World we've seen practically all of them. Why are those the only three lovely ones? Is Mickey just racist? Even against blondes? No, he's perfectly open-minded. Look, he's dreaming about the princess's boyfriends, too. Yeah, but do you think those are the maids the mirror meant? He could have meant Daisy, Clarabelle, and Clara Cluck. Oh, like, it's any creepier to dream about cows and ducks than it is about humans. For Mickey, I mean. Mickey. Yeah. Look, living with Kanga really messes with your psyche, okay? It's never okay. I think and apparently script read. readings, too. It's never okay. Brought to you by the Council of Shame Creepy Perverts. Remember, just say no to dreaming about cows and ducks. Cows and ducks? Uh, and here, <laughs> in Mickey's imagination, beauty and love will always survive. Ah, but in real life, beauty and love are often crushed to make room for marketability. <laughs> and because the queen isn't the loveliest person in some mouse's dream, she turns herself completely ugly because, fuck it, why fight the inevitable? <laughs> Into a nightmare fantastic. Title drop, take a shot. We're at Disneyland. We can't take a shot. Can now. Did you get that? Yep. Club 33. Snuck in wearing a suit made out of Roy Disney's corpse. Oh, it just kicked in. <laughs> oh, I thought Roy was coated in bronze. Wrong, Roy. Oh. You have beautiful eyes. You know that? Has anyone ever told you that? Yeah, my fiance. Plenty of times. <laughs> Recorded earlier. <laughs> Which was also a callback to uh, Ryan Hipp's cameo in Tony's Boy Meets World video. This is more copyrighted music playing now, so uh, talk, 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 that's an option. Um, uh, yeah, the the credits continue as we go into part three. <laughs> Riff in the credits. <laughs> ah, look at all those clips. Boy, this guy sure uses a lot of clips, huh? Good God. Copyright. Oh. There's a very active cat on the prowl. Active cat. 